Crossover Thursday is presented by Prize Picks. Download the app and use code Locked On NFL to win fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. I'm Joe Marino, host of Locked On Bills, joined by Kyle Krabs, the host of Locked On Dolphins, and it's time to talk keys to victory for both sides of this game, Kyle, for Miami to come to Orchard Park and get an upset. I was going to say, what, you don't got to be shy about it. I mean, what, they, what, they haven't won an Orchard Park, I think, since, what, 16? Is the last time they won up there? I don't I don't remember it. I think it was the JHIE uh, Week 16. Oh, boy. Rumbling. Overtime game. With all the, the, the final the field goals in the final minute to send it to overtime, and then Ajayi rips the long run off in overtime. I think that's the last time Miami won up there. It's been a minute. Man, you're not wrong. It has been a while. Um boy. Yeah, it's it's been a while. I it's it's not I, I'm searching for it right now. It, you know, you're right. You're exactly right. It was 34 31. Uh, Dolphins uh, in December, just Christmas Eve in 2016. Mm-hmm. That's the last time. Yeah. So for, for the Dolphins to do that, um, the things that have kind of been Mike McDaniel tendencies need to not be Mike McDaniel tendencies. I think that's the biggest thing. Anytime Mike gets into a game script where he feels like he has to score 30 points to win the game, uh, caution goes to the wind. We're going for it on fourth down in moments where we shouldn't go for it on fourth down. We're getting overly aggressive. We're getting overly complicated with uh, some of the calls and the time in which it takes to get the calls in. And uh, you don't have to look any further than uh, fourth down and red zone for this team this year has already been hard enough. They're two of 15 on fourth down this year. Uh, That's a 13% conversion rate. And Mike has really dialed it back with the quarterback situation being what it was last year. They were 11 and 25 on fourth down last year. They were 28 in the league. Uh, now they were second in touchdown conversion in, in the red zone last year. That that's a, they're a bottom tier team at it this year. And those things popped up against Arizona. You know, you get down inside the, the 15 yard line with a minute and six seconds left to run a play to get down inside the, the 10 yard line. You don't snap the ball again until 26 seconds left. You let a full 40 seconds run off trying to score a touchdown at the end of the half. And I remember that was a sequence that happened uh, against Buffalo, where the way that they called the two minute or the four minute offense to close the first half and they end up getting a field goal there, but like they weirdly botched it because they didn't want to uh, have a third with a third down with a minute and 10 seconds left. It was third and 11. Uh, they ended up converting, but like the call was weird because they didn't want to get Buffalo the ball back because they knew Buffalo was getting the ball to start the second half. Like that kind of stuff can happen. Like, if you're going to get down in the red zone, you have to score touchdowns. Obviously, against this Bills team that, that is capable of putting up points in a hurry and, and has a lot of different ways than they can beat you. Miami hasn't done that this year. But, like, the Mike McDaniel element as the big key to victory is you have to manage the game well. And I know a lot of Dolphins fans don't have a lot of confidence in that because usually when these two teams play, that game script goes a certain kind of way. And Miami makes mistakes after trading some blows with Buffalo early on and then the game snowballs and then it's like oh well it's midway through the third quarter and we're down 10 points we have to go for it on fourth down on our own 40 yard line and you don't get it and then you look up and now you're down 17 with three minutes left in the third quarter so that's the kind of stuff for Miami that it's been such a consistent theme and it's been popping up and it popped up against Arizona with situationally closing a half and how you manage the clock those things you you have to play a perfect game in that regard uh, because this team is not focused, it's not disciplined, um, and it's 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 not capable of avoiding beating itself right now. So you have to do your part as the guy who's managing the game to do that. It's interesting. My my number one key is game scripts as well, and I think it starts with the Bills starting fast on offense because I I feel like <clears throat> to the points that you've made. Game scripts have been problematic for Miami in this series and that if you can get Miami to chase it, I think the decision-making and the execution can kind of fall apart. And so for Buffalo to be able to come out and score points early and put Miami in that spot, I think that's going to give them their best opportunity to win the game. Obviously, the Dolphins, I think if you can kind of keep them in a neutral game script, that's when they're going to be their most dangerous. And so 
don't allow that to happen. And it's easier said than done, but go go score points on offense and see if you can get Miami to uh, to kind of chase it a little bit and, and see if those mistakes that have come up in the past uh, happen once again. I think the run defense for the Bills is going to be really important in this one. Um, and if you go to that week two game, early on Miami was moving the ball well. They were running the ball. They were they were kind of leaning into some quick passes and getting some yards after catch. And actually, my my third my third point is trust the technique of the defense because I think that combination of Miami's ability to run the ball and then hit some of those quick hitting passes and get yards after catch has been a challenge for the Bills at times this year pretty much in every game, I would say minus Seattle last week, where the the quick misdirection throws, the runs, uh, where the Bills can kind of get creased. That's where they have their challenges, and I think Miami does have the ability to kind of challenge those those spots of the Bills. And so run defense, squeezing gaps, being where you're supposed to be, fitting the run, and doing so with light boxes. We know the Bills will play mm-hmm. light boxes. They're never going to give you heavy or even rarely neutral boxes. So those run fits with their front, combined with trusting the technique of the defense where you you can't you can't just run out of your spots due to all the play fakes and all the the eye candy that Miami is going to present to you with motion and misdirection and all the tags that they have to all of their plays if you know Dorian Williams or Balen Specter if he has to play or Taron Johnson's going to be getting out of their spots Miami's uniquely kind of built to take advantage of that so good disciplined uh coverage with with against that quick passing game is going to be important to uh to neutralize Miami on offense yeah, I, I think the thing that I would just leave you with off of that is is I think the storyline I'm most interested in in this game um, is the Dolphins' offensive line, which we talked about them earlier and the continuity that they have had, and they have really come together. I think this is a great test for them relative to playing New England, playing Indianapolis, who was down a couple of guys that didn't have to force Buckner go, playing Arizona, who's a rebuilding team with a lot of youth on the trenches, um, they still had some stout players, but it, it's a little different story. Can you, can it perform for a whole game? And can you trust it if you're the play caller for Miami? And that's, I think, where I'm most excited to, outside of like actual game result, I want to know where all of this progress that we seem to have seen from the Dolphins offensive line against a good front, even if they play light boxes, okay, then you should average a healthy clip running the ball and you should be willing to do it for 60 minutes and embrace that you're going to try to limit the possessions in this game and and do so. Or are you going to say, oh, we got Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell and we got Tua back. So you looked up against Arizona, they threw the ball, I think, 26 times in the first first half. So uh, that's one thing I am definitely going to be very keyed in on this game as well.